they are responsible for the sinking of this ship. And we are the only ones who can save it. When you read the second book of Chronicles, chapter number 14, verse number 7, God says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. My fellow brothers and sisters, allow me, therefore, to break this scripture into small tatters so that everyone can have a better and a clear understanding of what God wants. It says, if, 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 then it simply means God is ready and prepared to heal the land, but there's a condition. Hence, he starts with the word if. Now, he says, if my, 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 who is talking is God. If my, who is talking is God. Now, the first question we must answer, who is God? And he goes further and says, if my people, the second question is, who are God's people? And he goes further and says, who are called my, by my name? What's God's name? What is his name? will humble themselves. What is to humble oneself? And pray. What is to pray? And seek my face. What is to seek God's face? Or how to seek God's face? And he says, then I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins and heal the land. This simply means sins have everything to do with the healing of the land. Therefore, when the land is sick, between the land and God, there are sins. And these sins are there because of his people. Now, let's answer the first question. Who is God? Because he is saying, if my people, then who is he? We need to know. When you read the book of John, chapter number 17, verse number 3, Jesus is saying, this is life eternal. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Beloved, I have a concern in this statement. What worries me is the sequence. Normally we know that we must first know the Son, Jesus Christ, and he will introduce us to his Father. But it says, Eternal life is knowing you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. How can we know him? Now, the chief apostle has taught us a lot about the first book of John, chapter 5, verse 20. It says, we know that the Son of God has come and he has given us an understanding of knowing the true one. We are in him who is true by being in his Son, Jesus Christ. 
He is the true God and eternal life. Is it Balwes in well? Protavision puts it more clear. It says, Ke siazi ukuba unyana katiko ufiki wasinika in hondo yoku wasimasi o inyanis. Si kuye ke o inyanis. Kuye unyana wake uyesu krista. Kuye lo utiko o inyanis. No bumi obungu napagate. Si kuye ke o inyanis. Kuye unyana wake. It simply means John, Apostle John here is saying we are in him who is the true one, the true God. We are in him. But by being in his son, meaning we, we find him in his son and his son is the true God and eternal life. In another words, Apostle John was trying to say, God and his son are one. Now listen to this. The chief apostle once said, when you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 32, verse number 4, it says God is a rock. And when you read the first book of Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 4, it says Christ is the rock. And when you read Matthew chapter 16, verse number 18, it says Peter, the chief apostle, is a rock. In another way, the chief apostle is a rock. Christ is a rock and God is a rock. Therefore, when we talk about the chief apostle, Christ and God, we are simply talking about one and the same thing, the rock. That is why we say at times the chief apostle is the son of God. We are not wrong. Sometimes we say he is Christ. We are not wrong. Sometimes we say he is our God. We are not wrong. For the chief apostle, Christ and God are the same thing, a rock. Just like me and you, some of the people are calling you father, others are calling you brother, others are calling you uncle, but the truth remains, you are one and the same person. Now, in simpler terms, when the Bible says, if my people, that God who is talking there is right here with us, he is the chief apostle, the rock of ages. my people who are called by my name. What is God's name? The chief apostle once said to us, the names with which we are being called are God's name. Namtanje, some of us are called brothers and sisters. Others are called deacons and mother deacons, others priests and mother priests, others are called community elders and mother community elders, others are called district elders and mother district elders, others are called overseas and mother overseas, others are called apostles and mother apostles. Those names are God's name. If my people who are called by my name now the second question, the second question is, who are God's people? That's the next question. Who are God's people? When you read the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13, it says, you also became God's people when you received the true message, the good news that brought you salvation, you believed in Christ and God put his stamp of ownership on you by giving you the Holy Spirit. 
Let me repeat it. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. You also became God's people. You became. Meaning they were not. Meaning we are not. But we become. And they became God's people. This simply means not everyone can claim to be God, God, God's people. Not everyone. You became God's people when you received the true message. The good news that brought you salvation and you believed in Christ. And God put on you his stamp of ownership by giving you the Holy Spirit. Meaning when we talk about the people of God, we are talking about the people who have received the Holy Spirit. Those who have a mark on their foreheads. Those are the people of God. In simpler terms, we are talking about Abantu Anabom Postu. Now here God is saying, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, what is to humble oneself? To humble oneself is to be leadable. Hence when you read the first book of Peter, chapter 5, verse number 6, Apostle Peter is saying, let us humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. The hand of God. When you humble yourself under that mighty hand, we are cockleg. Now, this simply means God was concerned at the time because his people were not humbling themselves, meaning they were not leadable. The thing cockleg. As a result, umshaba the land became sick. Will humble themselves and pray. What is to pray? To pray is to attend the services. Pray in That is to pray. When you evangelize, you are praying. When you, you go to the practices, you are praying. When you attend Wednesday services, you are praying. When you go to evangelize, when, when you attend the evangelical services on Saturday, you are praying. So if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, this simply means these people of God stopped praying. And that was a worrying factor to God. They stopped praying. And he says, and seek my faith. How to seek God's face? We seek his face through tithes and offering. Hence he says in the book of Malachi chapter 3, come back to me and I will come back to you. Through tithes and offerings. Meaning, if you are seeking God's faith, you will tithe and bring offerings. Hence, when you read the 2020 annual greetings by the Rock of Ages, the chief apostle, when you read chapter number four, it talks about his presence. It's chapter number four, page number nine, paragraph number three. It says, if anyone or whoever who does not bring tithes and offerings rejects the presence of God in his life. Meaning to seek God's face is to bring tithes and offerings. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Meaning it is up to us when do we want our God to heal our land. If we want him to heal our land as soon as possible, we must pray, we must humble ourselves as soon as possible. We must pray as soon as possible. We must seek his face as soon as possible. 
You can be leadable. Being quarantined in the house, you can be leadable. You can be humble if you're a leader. Being quarantined in the house. You can pray. Being quarantined in the house, you can still pray. We can have services, all church services, inside the house as a family. Every day you, you must have a church service. Every day you must practice. If you are three, four, five, you can have a practice. What I know is that you can even sing alone because you know you are not alone. Not is called. It's up to us. When do we want our God to heal our land? We can, heal, we, we, can, we can seek his faith right now. Today was supposed to be the day of the provincial competition since yesterday. And we were supposed to, to have the entrance fees and the registration fees. Through tithes and, and offerings, we seek his face. We can do it. You can do it. You can give your offerings right now. You can transfer it. Right now. So that at the end of this service, each and every province, the registration fee is complete. To show that we, we want our land to be healed by our God as soon as yesterday. We can do it. I would ask you, my brother Kuseni, to give us a, a song, if that is possible, so that I can continue. Father Kuseni, do you hear me? TB was a very dangerous and incurable disease back then, which killed a lot of people. There was no vaccine whatsoever for TB when it started. But the first patient of TB to be cured was a sister called Mary Campbell. He was a sister in this church, and his t her TB was healed by the apostles when there was no cure for TB. For the apostles understood what was the problem. They even understand, even today, what is the problem for one to become sick. Enyami. Apostles know that when someone is sick, he or she is sick because of sin. This horn is called Saban. Sin. If you don't believe me, there's a beautiful story in the Bible of Jesus. There were two men having their own friend who was paralyzed. And they heard that Jesus is healing people. So they took their friend together with them to Jesus. And upon arrival, the house in which Jesus was, was full to its capacity. And they couldn't enter. 
and they decided to take off the roof of the house so that they can take down their friends to Jesus so that Jesus can heal their friends. And when Jesus saw this act, he said to this man or to this man, your friend's faith have saved you. Listen very carefully. And he said, your sins are forgiven. And he was healed. So it is evident that the problem with this man, which caused the sickness, was the sin. Because after his sins were forgiven, he was healed. So it is true that when, when you see, when you become sick, or when you see someone sick, it's because of sin. That is why God says in, in, in the scripture, a second book of Chronicles, he says, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land. Forgive sins and heal the land. Jesus is forgiving this man's sins and he is healed. That is why even here in church, when a brother, a sister, or an officer is feeling ill, the anointed officer will take along the Holy Communion to handle that person. Why is the officer taking the Holy Communion when he received a report which says so-and-so is not feeling well, so-and-so is feeling ill? Why is he taking the Holy Communion along? It is because he knows and understands that when a person is sick, he is going to wage a war against sin so that this person can be healed. So the reason why people are sick is sin. But we need to understand what is sin so that we go out here and heal our land. What is sin? Sin to any son. Some of us are saying sin is to be a drunkard. Drinking liquor a lot is a sin. Others are saying if you are a, a, a humanizer, uh, that's a sin. Others are saying many different things which we normally call sin. But I have a very serious concern. I'm not saying uh, drinking liquor or becoming a drunkard is not sin. I'm not saying that. But I don't also agree that it is sin. Why? Because God says to his people, I will forgive your sin and wash them to be white as snow. So, sins are washed. Just like you, if your shirt is dirty, you take, you, you wash it. After washing it, it is a clean shirt, but the fact remains, it is still your shirt. It's just that it was dirty. The same shirt is washed. Now it's clean. It's a clean shirt. Things are like that. Things are being washed. They are not taken away. They are being washed. Now, if we are saying that drinking liquor is the sin and sins are washed, meaning God is washing drunkards so that drunkards can become clean and holy drunkards. No, that cannot be. Therefore, drinking liquor cannot be classified as a sin. What is a sin? What is a sin? Because as, when we talk about a sin or sin, sins are forgiven. Even in our church, the leader would say, sins that you know and, and those you do not know are forgiven. Meaning it's not us who are being forgiven, 
but our sins are being forgiven, not us, but our sins are being forgiven. Hence, God says, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins, not them, their sins. What is a sin? In us, we have spirits or people who are staying in our blood. We have our own ancestors living in our blood. Some of those people didn't hear God. They know nothing about him. They have not received him. But they live in us. And they influence us to do things in a certain way. If you don't believe me, read Romans chapter number 7, verse number 20. Apostle Paul is saying, Apostle Paul says, I do not do the good that I want to do. I don't do the good that I want to do. Because it is no longer I who do, but it is a sin or the sin in me doing all these things. That is why it is not you who is being forgiven, but rather your sins, because it's not you who is doing things, but things are being done by sins or a sin inside you. That's what Paul is saying. Then when we talk about sins which make people to be ill, we're simply talking about the departed souls in our blood. If those people have not received God, if those people does not listen to God, and we take our lives and hand our lives to their hands, therefore we are in a problem. We are going to live a sinful life because our actions will be directed by the souls in our blood. That is why the chief apostle once said in the annual greetings of, of two years back, he said, there are two types of people. There are people who are living in the, holy, on the, in, in the holy land and those who are living in the unholy land. He says the people who are living in the holy land are the ones who took their lives and gave them to the Holy Spirit are the ones who are being controlled by the Holy Spirit. They are living on the holy ground. And those who are living on the dirty ground are the people who took their lives and handed them to their ancestors. These are two different people. Now, to heal someone who is sick, his or her sins must be forgiven. And the only manner in which people's sins can be forgiven, including ours, our sins are forgiven when we do the will of God. God has already told us in the book of Chronicles what we must do. Then our, our sins will be forgiven. Then we'll be healed. And if we want to heal the land, we must go and evangelize. And if we evangelize, we're giving the people the good news. And those good news are not only received by those who are living, but they are also received by the departed living in their blood. That is why when you read the book of Peter, first Peter chapter 4, verse number 6. He says, the good news, which is the gospel, is also preached even unto the dead. Because those people need to be given the gospel. And after receiving the gospel in the first book of Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 29, Apostle Paul says, they are being baptized. The dead are being baptized. 
They receive the gospel and they also get to be baptized by the Holy Spirit so that they can be controlled by the mind of God. And when they are being controlled by the mind of God, they are saved. And when they are saved, being or dwelling in our, our blood, we are also saved because our actions will no longer be directed by the departed souls who do not know God. But rather, our actions together with them will be controlled by the mind of God, which is the Holy Spirit. In conclusion, my fellow brothers and sisters, I want to say to you, we were called by God, and each and every one of us was given a specific task and a job description as a brother. And a sister, you know what is a job description. You are away to be traveled by people from, from the world to heaven. Perform your duties. Because not performing your duties is sin. It means you are being controlled by a different spirit other than the Holy Spirit. As a deacon, you know your duty. Do it. Hence, when, 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 when the day God gave you uh, uh, this beautiful gift, he said to you, if you don't utilize the fire that has been put inside you, that fire will burn you and your family. That fire will burn you and your family. Now, if we don't want to be burned, by the fire of God, deacons, please perform your duties. Priests, perform your duties. For God is willing, ready, and prepared to heal our land. But his focus is on his people, us. We need to humble ourselves, pray, and seek his faith. Let us perform our duties. Community elders, district elders, overseers, all of us, let us, each and every one, perform his duties. By so doing, God will be merciful on us and through us, our land will be healed. Our land will be healed. As I'm saying right now, God wants to bring changes to the current situation in the country and in the world at large. And he can only do that through us, his people. Let us listen to the word of God. God has already told us that when we talk about him, we are talking about the rock, the chief apostle. Let us do everything that he tells us to do to save this land. Coronavirus is not something that overpowers God. Nothing is impossible in the God that we serve. He told us to be in our houses so that we can have new power, so that he can strengthen us, so that each and every one of us can do a self-introspection. And if you find yourself away from the will of God, return to the will of God. Hence, the book of Hosea 6 says, Come, let us return to the Lord. Let us return to God, for he has torn us to pieces, but he will also heal us. Let us return to him. He is the God who formed the light and created darkness. He is the God who made peace and created evil. All these things, he can do them. He is the able God. Even today, don't be troubled. This sickness, coronavirus, will vanish. As we are sitting here in prayer, if we listen to God, we hear him, 
and take a decision right now, then you will see changes outside. The number of in infections will drop. We won't have any deaths. Only if we take the right decisions right now where we are sitting, that from now onwards, I and my house will serve the Lord. That is the message that our God is giving us. May the good God bless you as you are listening to his message this morning. Let him bless you in abundance. Let those who are sick be healed. Let those who are affected or infected by this coronavirus, let them be healed because we know that they can be healed once their sins are forgiven. As the anointee of God, I declare unto you right now that the sins that you know and those which you don't know are remitted right now. I bring unto you the everlasting life that our God, the chief apostle, has bestowed upon us. May the good God bless you all. Let us close. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Let us pray. May the grace of our Lord, Caesar Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.